we focus on the present moment so you give the mind a sense of feeling at home here. This is the place where you belong. Now, for most of us, we don't live right here. We live in the past and live in the future and come running through the present moment every moment, like a little kid who doesn't spend much time at home. Once something from home comes running in, then goes running out again. But right here is where a lot of issues are going to happen. And as life goes on, this awareness right here with the body is going to become a bigger and bigger issue. As the body begins to break down, illness comes, pain comes, you suddenly find yourself less and less able to do things you used to be able to do before. And the mind gets more and more roped into being here, much against its will. Now, if you learn how to settle in here well in advance, then have a sense of how the awareness in the present moment can relate to the body in a way that it doesn't have to suffer from the issues in the body. That aging, illness, and death are not much of a problem. They're simply issues of the body, but the mind doesn't have to suffer. See, when you get this moment in the present moment, more and more under your control. You want to get the mind under control. You want to get more and more familiar with the territory. It's as if you know you're going to be mugged at a certain corner or someone's threatening to mug you at a certain corner. So you go down and you look at the corner and you figure out where are the ways you can run away. How can you escape? How can you get through safely? So get to know this spot. Get to know how thoughts arise in the present moment how they take shape, how they get nourished by your attention, and how you can starve some thoughts if you find that they're unhealthy or unhelpful. There are lots of things to learn here. But even though this is our home, we don't spend all of our time at home. There are times we have to think about the past and think about the future. Someone was telling me the other day that heard someone say that if you're thinking about the past and the future, you're suffering. If you're in the present moment, you're not suffering. Well, that's not the case. It makes it sound like you, to avoid suffering, you just don't think and hang out in the present moment. But that's not how the Buddha taught. He taught, you to, he taught people to think in the long term. What, when I do it, will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? That's the question that lies at the beginning of wisdom and discernment. So you've got to think out to the long term as to what's really important, and that gives you perspective on the present moment. In fact, when the Buddha talks about the importance of being right in the present moment, and it's interesting that he doesn't talk about it that much, but when he does, it's all because you realize there are things that have to be done before you die if you want to die well. In other words, die with skill. And you don't, have, don't know how much time you've got. You can spend a lot of time planning for your old age, and then it turns out, well, you don't live to old age. Something happens before then. So you want to be ready to go at any time. It's like knowing that there's a fire off in the distance and you might be called on to evacuate at any moment. So you have all your valuables packed, but you can't take all your valuables. You figure out there are certain things that are important, and you keep them ready at hand so that when the time comes to go, you pick up the bag and you're gone. You've got all the important things with you. So when you think about the long term, how does that reflect back on the present moment? What's important? Well, the shape of your mind is important. Anything that comes up in the mind that could pull you away. Say, well, have a little entertainment right now, or think about this because you like this or that. You have to think about the long-term consequences. In other words, the Buddha is not telling us not to think about the past or the future. He's telling us how to think about the past and the future. 
in terms of the past. He wants you to remember the good Dharma lessons you've heard, learned from the past. And that includes not only what you've heard or read in terms of the Dharma, but what you've learned from your own actions. What kind of actions lead to harm? What kind of actions don't lead to harm? You learn how to take responsibility for looking at what's going on. And now no, what's just going on, look at how you've been shaping your life and try to learn lessons from that. And then you think about the future. The future doesn't end with death, it goes beyond. And it goes beyond in a particular way. There are some teachings and some religions that say, well, after you die, then it's either eternal damnation or eternal bliss. But those teachings don't really encourage you to look at your actions, because there is no human action possible that would earn eternal damnation or earn eternal bliss. And it leaves you, leaves you hanging. That all sounds very arbitrary. Somebody else out there is making the decisions, which means that you're not making the decisions. Which doesn't encourage you to learn from your actions. But the Buddha doesn't, doesn't teach that way. He teaches another way. He says, your actions do shape the future, and the results in the future are going to be proportional to your actions. But there are a lot of things that go into deciding what that proportion is. And if you don't really get your act together, it's just going to keep going on and on and on, up and down, up and down. As he said, it's like throwing a stick up in the air. Sometimes it lands on this end, sometimes it lands on the other end, sometimes it lands flat in the middle. If we just take the line of one person's many lifetimes, it's pretty random. But when you see the larger picture, you realize, okay, it, it is your actions. The actions are the things that determine the long-term course. This is why it's good to reflect on the past actions that you've done, the ones that had good results, the ones that had bad results, and ask yourself, what lessons can you learn? So it's not just being in the present moment or hanging out in the present moment that counts as practice. Learning how to think properly about the past and think properly about the future, those are important aspects of the practice, too. They put the present moment into perspective. Because if you don't get the right perspective on the present moment, there can be a lot of suffering, even just trying to be right here in the present moment. If you haven't learned how to master the present moment, there's a lot of suffering here. There's the suffering of the aggregates, there's the suffering of the clinging and craving. These are things that we have to sort out. And then if we have sorted them out, okay, that's that's a real treasure. That's a valuable that you want to make sure is in your bag. So when the time to evacuate comes, you've got good things in your bag. A lot of people just stuff their little bag with all kinds of garbage. and blame all their suffering on the fact that the fire is going to come. Well, the fire comes. The fires of aging, illness, and death are burning on us all the time. That's not something we can change. What we can change is what we take with us, what we salvage from this burning house. So even though we have a home here in the present moment, it is a burning house. And for the time being, as we work on concentration, we try to find a room where we can stay, where it's cool, where things are fireproof, or relatively fireproof. So we can figure out what's going on in the rest of the house. But there will come a time when you can't even stay in this room anymore. So where do you go? This is one of the reasons why when we work on concentration practice, we try to get a sense of just awareness in and of itself. You're with the breath. And for a lot of the concentration, it's just learning how to stay with the breath and get to the point where the mind and the, the breath, where your awareness and the breath seem to be one. Wherever there's awareness, there's breath. Wherever there's breath, there's awareness. 
but you don't want to stay at that stage. You want to move on to the next stage, which is learning to see that as these things sit together for a while, they begin to separate naturally. It's easiest to see when you get the mind still to the point where the breath actually is still as well. And the sense of the body begins to dissolve, and then you've got awareness just on its own. Then you learn to maintain that sense of, okay, this is how the body impinges on your awareness in the present moment. But then there's the awareness itself, which is something separate. In other words, you learn about this at points when the sense of the body goes, but it's really useful when you can maintain that sense of awareness as something separate, even when your awareness of the body is there as well. That's a much safer home. It too has its burning edges, but it's a lot safer. And it's by hanging on to the awareness that you make sure that you're in a much better position to notice what's coming and what's going, and how the mind latches onto things, and how it doesn't have to latch onto things. That's when you've got a real treasure. And it will be found here in the present moment. You're not going to find it in the past or in the future. But when you learn how to think properly about the past and think properly about the future, and it really helps focus you on what's important in the present moment. We talk about developing alertness to what's going on. Well, the alertness is focused on what you're doing. Why? Because that's the lesson that comes from the past and the future. You've got to really focus on what you're doing, because that's the most important thing in the present moment. We're not here just to be aware all around of just everything at once. Because there are lots of things in the present moment that are really irrelevant to the big issues, i.e. the fact that the present moment is burning. This home in the present moment is burning. And you've got to develop the skills that enable you not to get burned. So think of the practice as an all-around practice. We're not just practicing in the present moment, we're also learning how to engage the past and engage the future. So that the lessons of the past don't get lost, and the future does hold out the prospect that someday you will find something that lies beyond past, present, and future. That's the place that's really safe. The Buddha doesn't talk about it as being a home, because a home is an area where you have to have shelter from something. But when you're there, there's no need for shelter. But in the meantime, you've got to keep this, sh <coughs> this present moment shelter as solid as you can, because this is where the work needs to be done.